to be able to handle being present with the fear that's in our body. And that's how we actually calm ourselves. Mm -hmm. So Gabor Mate talked about co-regulation emotionally. And so a child needs to have a self-regulated adult to co-regulate with. And right now, and so a lot of people didn't have that. Mm -hmm. But also right now, there's not very many people that are self-regulated because there's so much fear. Hello, Awaken Beauties. Finally, it's here. The truth to empower women to true inner beauty through a healthy mind and inner biology. I am your hostess, Cassandra Keel, a 20-year salon owner, organic beauty product formulator, positive mind management, and clinical hypnotherapist. And I am here to help you stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Sponsored by evokebeauty.com. EVOQbeauty.com. Now, let's get to it. All right, ladies, if you're looking for healthy hair, beautiful skin, and a calm, quiet, clean, collected, powerful mind with superior CBD, go to evokebeauty.com. That's E-V-O-Q beauty.com. And you'll receive 25% off your very first order with the code AWAKEN. Again, that's evoqbeauty.com. Use the code AWAKEN for 25% off your first order. Welcome to the Awaken Beauty Podcast. I am Cassandra, your organic beauty, positive mind management, and biofeedback practitioner. And this episode is extra special and it is on point and on time to what we are dealing with in a global structure today. And at the time of this interview, we are experiencing the spread of the coronavirus. And for many, not only does the world feel less safe, but our everyday experiences of meeting our basic needs, such as going to the grocery store, can feel threatening. And we face an immense amount of financial and emotional stress. And on top of this, families may not have the skill sets and have the experience of and or are experiencing complete disconnection while underneath the roof at the same time, feeling disconnected and isolated and looking for screens and video games and other addictions just to keep us busy from what we're experiencing today. And though it saddens me that we have to experience something so traumatic as a collective in order to be empowered to change, I think it's important to speak on the importance of seeing this current reality as a portal to opening ourselves up to creating new paradigms and new ways of being and healing from the past traumas and staying present in the now and how we can get help from others. Now, there are some people that show up in the world that you can hear and tune directly into and feel their sense of strength, their sense of love, groundedness, and presence. And that is the sense you will feel from our guests today, Lynn Frazier, as we discuss how we can open, connect, and create a space to embrace change and cultivate self-love through these challenging times, but even more so, seeing a door that is open to us for opportunity and transformation. Now, a little bit about our guest, Lynn. Lynn brings the depth of 22 years experience teaching meditation. She specializes in holding a safe, trusted space for healing trauma in her private online sessions. And then Lynn lives near her, with her fam, near her family, Ocean and Forest in Nova Scotia, Canada. She is senior teacher in the Himalayan yoga meditation tradition and an experienced facilitator of Scott Killaby's Living Inquiries. Fast forward 25 years from when I first learned meditation in the early 90s, I see and love myself. I am authentic and connect deeply. My body is relaxed and I know my space and trauma is largely healed and resolved. I am mostly free of reacting and have have skills to work with thoughts and sensation. I know from experience I can 
be with whatever is arising in the space and time. I feel at 66 that I now am an emotional, mature adult. So Lynn has experienced a profound recognition of present moment awareness and embodies it naturally. That's the kind of teacher anyone would want. If, for if one's teacher does not have a direct experience in what is being taught, true transformation just cannot happen. And that comes from Scott himself. So Lynn, I want to welcome you to the show. Welcome to the Awaken Beauty Show. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Yes. And so, you know, we were connecting quite a few months ago. And as we know, life is busy and uh, we've all been brought to a halt. And so, you know, you were one of the first people I thought of as far as, all right, we've got to get Lynn on the show. And uh, your, your experience and your personal experience truly speaks for the work that you do. So maybe we can kind of um, start with just the basics of you and your experience and what led you to trauma and the specialization in, in trauma relief for so many individuals that you've helped with over the years. Yeah, that's a kind of an interesting journey. And, you know, we all have our journeys around this, don't we? Mm-hmm. So for me, I had a, a what most people would see as kind of an idyllic childhood. I was safe. There was no addiction, no violence, uh, you know, both parents. But there was a lack of emotional connection. And so when I was 12, a couple of things happened and I was really suffering and in trouble and there was nowhere that I could go for help. I couldn't talk to my parents. And I had a pretty turbulent, rough time as a teenager. I was publicly shamed. I was the bad girl. There was lots of stuff going on that was really difficult for me. And, you know, I was really desperate at times. I used drugs, alcohol, thought about killing myself. I, there was, a, it was hard. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of recovered from that through my, you know, 18, 20s into, you know, a period when I had a son. And I didn't understand anything about trauma then. I just thought, oh, I'd had a kind of a rough teenage years, you know. What I didn't realize is that I was actually in freeze. One of the trauma responses of fight, flight, freeze, fawning, I was in freeze. And so, you know, things happened that that weren't ideal for sure. But, you know, I was kind of managing. And then in the early 90s, I'd been working with an AIDS organization since 1987. Very intense working environment. Mm-hmm. And I decided to start taking meditation and and I just loved it. I just felt so at home and I started working with my mind. I started working with my breath and I started to understand. I, I've always been really interested in the psychology mm-hmm. uh, part of the, and the philosophy of meditation. I went along and, um, you know, had several years of, you know, really deep practice and, and really starting to heal my nervous system. I was teaching yoga and meditation uh, by that time. And then in 2004, I had a a threat with my son was misdiagnosed with a serious form of cancer. Mm. And in the nine weeks it took for them to say he didn't didn't have cancer at all. He had mono. Wow. And I had a profoundly difficult time with that and really started looking into my childhood, his childhood, and, and, you know, did some therapy and did some healing around that. Things were just starting to settle down. And then in 2005, I was riding my bicycle to work and I was assaulted, physically assaulted by a mentally ill person who was off of his meds on crystal meth. And, and, uh, and he punched me in the head. I went off the side of the bike path and I thought he was going to kill me. Hmm. And a, a woman who was riding behind me stopped, a stranger, started screaming, called the police and he didn't kill me. So that was good. So I'd had these two life threats, one after the other and, you know, within a year. And I had ended up with PTSD for after the assault. And because I'd been doing so much meditation and yoga and, and relaxing in my body, I knew a lot about the nervous system already. Mm-hmm. So I developed a program that I could kind of use to heal myself. And over about six months, I started to gradually be able to go out of the house without so much fear. And, you know, my brain was healing. My body was healing. I did a certain, you know, I've had these kind of points during my life where I've done some healing. And then in 2012, I connected with Scott Killaby to do the training to be a facilitator. And a few years later, I connected with Gabor Mate. Mm -hmm. I, I do this, the Radical Recovery Summit. So I find people, I interview them about innovation and recovery and addiction. And of course, he's well known as a person who talks about connection and addiction. And talks about the people that are, you know, though he worked with 
in Vancouver, heroin addicts, people with really serious drug problems, that they were all traumatized. And so yeah. he was one of the early pioneers in having us look more compassionately at addiction and looking through a trauma lens. And one of the things he said in my first interview with him was the effect of trauma is that we disconnect from ourselves mm-hmm. and from our sense of value and from the present moment. And that affected me so deeply because I could really look at that my whole life through that lens and the people that I was working with as well. Mm-hmm. And that led me on to a, a journey of really understanding trauma. And a lot of people think that they're not traumatized. Mm-hmm. I think right now with the coronavirus, a lot of people are going, yeah, I can see this as trauma. Yeah. So we're having a collective experience of trauma right now and fear. We're having a lot of what's going on in my nervous system. Why am I so irritable? Why can't I sleep? And, you know, I've done so much work healing my body and, and I have a pretty regulated life. You know, I live alone with my puppy in the forest and, mm-hmm. and you know, I, ha- I don't have a lot of um, stress, but I also have people that I love and care about. Right. So, you know, I noticed that one night I woke up in the, you know, five in the morning, I was just, my whole body was tight mm-hmm. and my shoulders, which used to be always around my ears have been creeping back up again, you know? Mm-hmm. And so because I know how to work with that and how to downregulate, I'm able to kind of keep some equanimity there. In 2004, when it happened with, with my son's diagnosis, misdiagnosis, I had so much catastrophic thinking. Yep. Like, you know, I would go into the future and I see it's so common for us to do this now. Yep. I don't know what's going to happen. And what if this happens? And what if I die? What if this person that I love gets it? What if, you know, I don't ever have a job again? There's so much fear Mm -hmm. and we don't know what to do. And so it really triggers our survival system. So a few years ago, I wrote a book called Friends with Your Mind, How to Stop Torturing Yourself with Your Thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so all of those practices are really relevant right now to work with our minds skillfully, but also to recognize that the thoughts, the catastrophic thoughts in our mind are coming from the fear in our body mm-hmm. generated by the nervous system. And so that's what I do now basically is, I mean, I work with people around healing trauma, but right now the trauma we're all working with is, is the fear of the situation that we're in. Yeah, I think that's, it's so beautiful and, and so important as far as a message right now, because, you know, I think we can live a lot of our life. And I think I read somewhere in in one of your blog posts or what have you, but you made a statement that as you you reach the age of 40, you really truly found self-love and Mm -hmm. self-acceptance. And we're never too old (laughs) to really truly meet ourselves where we can can um, be in that place of, of self-love and that self-criticism. And, you know, as far as like the sleep and, and all of these different trigger reactions on the body, we can only do so much with our conscious mind where so much is of, of it is subconscious. And so I tell a lot of my clients, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, is there's still so many messages coming in energetically that there's such a global shift right now and not even getting over esoteric, but they're really literally such a shift globally that the the mind and the body don't really know how to how to process it. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, you know, I always like the analogy of we have an old system, we have the old Microsoft system, and we haven't, aside coronavirus, we haven't taken the time to really sit down, unplug, reboot, and then start working with the new system. And so we've got all these old patterns and old systems now running. And it's almost like they, be, they can become an echo chamber. So mm-hmm. it's not necessarily that, you know, coronavirus is creating, it is creating its own subset of, of trauma. Just it is a global experience. Right. And to deny that is denial because it's a real human experience. But those past traumas, can be an echo chamber and be turned up in volume. And to what you're saying, the subconscious mind, and and this is kind of where we can take this next, is I know that you know of um, flipping the lid model. 
Dr. Um, Siegel. Oh, yeah. So we have the primitive brain mm -hmm. and then you have the amygdala and the frontal cortex. And when we flip our lid, it's like we have no thinking brain of how to even right. directly think about how to experience it. We're just in complete trauma walking around like this and absorbing everything and just trying to push it out because we don't know how to formulate it. And so your techniques and what you do with people is bring this back down so that their thinking brain can come back into order so that they can start working with the constructs that they have. Hey! All right, ladies, if you're looking for healthy hair, beautiful skin, and a calm, quiet, clean, collected, powerful mind with superior CBD, go to evokebeauty.com. That's E-V-O-Q beauty.com. And you'll receive 25% off your very first order with the code AWAKEN. Again, that's evoqbeauty.com. Use the code AWAKEN for 25% off your first order. So maybe we can shift into, you know, what is happening with the body? Taking that shame away from why we're feeling that we're feeling and it's okay to move through that. And, you know, I find that a little bit of trauma education and nervous system education is so helpful. Yeah. Because just exactly what you say, people are shaming themselves for our reactions, but yeah. our reactions are built into our mammal bodies. Mm -hmm. So we all have a primitive brain. We all have that fight to survive. And we have these four, there's a uh, fight, flight, freeze, but fawning has been added recently as a fourth one. So these really common evolutionary so this is, this is what brought our ancestors through to pass their genes on to us. And it was very helpful when we lived in a kind of a world where tigers were coming up behind the bushes and we needed to be able to react. And now what we have is this primitive system, survival system, that's not very well suited for our modern life and culture. And in addition to that, if people have a lot of experiences of fear when they're young, even before they're born in utero, mm -hmm. a lot of cortisol, a lot of adrenaline going through their system all the time. The amygdala, the amygdala gets bigger. Um, Dr. Mate talked about that a little bit in a recent podcast with Russell Brand, just talking about what happens in the body. And so everybody's having, you know, whatever experience we're having with, with the COVID-19, but depending on our prior trauma, we might be a lot more triggered and we might be having a lot more difficulty. So the first thing that we're going to always try to do with a threat is get away from it mm -hmm. we're going to try and, and run away and escape the threat, which makes sense. And then if we can't get away, we're going to fight and or freeze. And so we have these, we kind of have a, a preference. Our body has a preference based on what's worked in the past. Right. So, you know, when you were a kid, if you got yelled at and you yelled back and then they stop yelling at you, you're probably going to have more of an anger response. If you yelled and then got in worse trouble, you're going to go into freeze or you're going to turn that anger against yourself. And so we have these responses that are, you know, we could really use a lot of cognition right now. We could really mm -hmm. use a well-functioning brain. Absolutely. This is the exact time when a lot of people don't have very good access to it. So yeah. a threat of income is a, is a threat that we respond to. A threat of social losses, social um, you know, status, and certainly a life threat. We could get sick, we could die, or people we love. And then we also have this experience of, you know, we call them court efficiency beliefs of the reason things have been hard in my life is because there's something wrong with me. Right. Unlovable, unworthy, disgusting. Mm -hmm. And if you have that, then even just the social distancing feels like, feels personal, like, I know in my head that it's not really because of that, but I'm experiencing this. So that makes it a lot harder for people too. So some people are, you know, I'm a really, I'm in a really fortunate situation where I am. I'm safe and secure where I live. I don't have anybody in my house that's against me. And sometimes, you know, people turn against each other mm -hmm. and, and it's just our, our survival systems are, are in gear. And then we, nobody's the adult in the room because everybody's triggered, right? Yeah, everybody's triggered and they are mostly responding out of the, you know, lowest part of the brain. And that's, you know, from, you know, I just, I really think and I have a heart for these families right now too. It's, yeah. 
you know, for to shut down the kids from school and then to expect them to have the self-resiliency, to be self-disciplined, to get up and do their homework and to be compliant with their parent. And, mm-hmm. you know, where, you know, I own a salon. And so, you know, women are in my chair and, and I am utmost, I live a life of service. And so I try to be as present as I possibly can with them because I'm there to deliver a nurturing, whatever that is for them at that time. And you and I both can agree the addiction to the phones and what's next and the dings and the dopamine and all of this, when all of that's shut off, you have nothing else to be vulnerable to who you are yeah. and who you've become. And so even though it may be you know, a force out, like I can't be with my clients, you know, there's, there's just such a, there's just such a push against you as far as like pushing up against you. I don't know how to explain it, but there's just such a shutdown in the body. And so it's hard to bring that awakened again and just really start tap into it. And you and I, I I had said to you, maybe now isn't the perfect time to go and dig up all your past trauma, but for hypnotherapy, I'm just helping people understand what you're saying is understanding the primitive brain, how it works, why it's trying to keep you safe. But also there's a positive side to this because it's your master. And if you can help your subconscious mind and, and kind of coach it along on what you want it to deliver for you, there's great opportunity there. And I think we just need people like you or professional help to really help us gather those tools and just kind of be mindful of the time that we have. What is something that you've been able to, even though you are kind of secluded in this beautiful forest and one dog and I myself am single, so I don't have to deal with anybody else in my home, but is there something that has personally helped you? Is it a, is it a meditation practice? practice or anything that is just kind of you keep coming back to that has helped you. Even clients coming to you with trauma can kind of start to kind of sting you a little bit with, you know, energy. So what helps you? So the most helpful thing I find is to be present in our own body. Yep. So somatic. And that's something that's been really growing in awareness the last five years, last two Mm -hmm. years, even a lot more. Everything, everybody's talking about somatic healing now. For sure. It's because it really is necessary. So You know, for instance, my son is at a bit of a higher risk. He has um, chronic asthma Mm -hmm. and so, and his wife's a doctor, so she will be exposed to it. Um, And so for me, one of the things that comes up is a a feeling of heaviness or tightness in my chest and there's pain. And so I've, I've been sitting with it and I've been, you know, facilitated around it too in the inquiry practice that that I do. mm -hmm. Part of what we do with a facilitator is is you have someone there to just kind of help you stay present. And so we, we work with the energy. And so we start with, well, what do I feel in my body right now? Mm-hmm. And when we feel fear, it's often in our gut yep. or we have the tight shoulders, we're defending ourselves, you know? And when we have some kind of heartbreak or sadness or grief, it's often in the chest and the heart area, the heart center. So I, you know, I sit with that and I, I'm present with it and, I, I welcome it. There's a really simple practice that we do. Thank you for arising. That's kind of a variation of the Honopono prayer. And so you would just, and, and everybody watching could do this for just a moment, just kind of tune into your body, take a breath mm-hmm. and notice what's here. Notice if there's energy, sensation, and, or bring your, you know, your attention into your heart center and notice what's there. And then you, to that energy, as so though you're talking to that energy, say, thank you for arising. I love you and you're welcome to stay as long as you like. Mm. And when we have pain, mostly we don't mean that. Mm-hmm. We want it to go away. And we have a whole culture that's built on addiction to make the pain go away. We don't want to feel it. And then at some point in our lives, and for a lot of us, it's right now. Yeah. This has disrupted things so in such a major way that we, we just we're, we're just sitting here going, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? Yeah. To feel that pain and then to, to see, well, what are the thoughts that are here? Um, you know, for me, it's one of the things I was looking at was my son could die. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen. They're taking all precautions, right? But right. that's the fear. And so then I could look at that and there's different ways. Um, you know, we can put the words into into this area here and just kind of do some tapping on them, take our attention mm-hmm. into the sound and sensation of the tapping. We have a lot of tools that, that I would use with people and with myself to remain present in this moment. Mm-hmm. So part of it is, you know, your feet on the floor, your seat in the chair, your breath, 
and and to be present in our physical body and to to be able to handle being present with the fear that's in our body and that's how we actually calm ourselves mm-hmm. so Gabor Mate talked about co-regulation emotionally and so a child needs to have a self-regulated adults to co-regulate with and right now and so a lot of people didn't have that mm-hmm. but also right now there's not very many people that are self-regulated because there's so much fear right so in a regular crisis you might be able to go to your friend who's pretty stable but right now everybody's really struggling yeah everybody's experiencing their own kind of trauma whatever that is for them whether it's financially or i've had a number of you know a lot of the women i serve are 45 plus and you know a number of them very very concerned for their parents my mother herself when we as women and nurturers of our parent, we can't go into the facility to help help yeah. them, help them eat, love them up, you know. Yeah. A fear that's come up for me is I've always told my mother, I said, Mom, the time and point if it ever comes that you can't see grandma. And, you know, I don't want to go there, but I say that's when I see her decline and her actually passing away because it's that that human connection that's keeping her alive that I know in my heart and my intuition. All of those things can kind of come up. And, and you know, I have to say, so what? You know, I, we cannot control everything. And the somatic experience is is definitely needed. And I think, you know, the facilitation that you've gone through sounds really uh, great because it's important that someone gives you permission to continue to work with it in your presence because we live a life you know of addiction and pushing that down or away and work and all of that like i said it's all all those constructs have been pulled away for me personally going outside like you know my previous thought process was i i'm such a I'm an earthy person i'm so frustrated i don't choose I can't go outside because I'm so busy. I'm taking every moment and I actually can feel my cells and the energy in my body being invigorated, filling back in. I feel the expansiveness in my body versus the contraction. So paying attention to that is gives you a clue that you're going in the right direction, of recreating or rebooting your system and looking for new possibilities. Because if you ask the mind what, do you, what it can give you and what you need from it, it will, it's your master. It will serve you. Um, but like you were saying, you know, pushing up on, you know, the negativity is just going to, it's going to bring more negativity, what you focus on. So Dr. Gabor Maté, I'm, I'm just, you know, I think we both love his work and have both been very, and the industry has been very influenced by him. Working with him, this piece of, of the addiction and even in utero and, you know, moving through that, the childhood experience, oftentimes, you know, we don't have a thinking cognitive brain till the age of eight. So all of those memories and smaller big traumas are stored, whatever that looks like. Um, can you speak a little bit more about the work with Gabor Mate and how that has really opened up your mind and how you maybe practice with your clients? So one of the, you know, his definition of, of trauma being that we disconnect from ourselves. And yeah. a lot of what that looks like in people is a really severe inner critic. hmm that mean, nasty voice. What's the matter with you that you can't get more done? What's the matter with you can't get out of bed right now? And just that nastiness. And sometimes that's a voice we heard as a child. Yeah, that's for sure. But it can happen in other ways too. The disconnection can be just a, a deep freeze where we just kind of sleepwalk through our life and we get really busy. But one thing I think is really interesting is how there's so many people that want to go outside right now. Mm -hmm. It's like we have that sense of that. Mm -hmm. That's what we actually really need is to be outdoors. We need fresh air. We need to be moving our bodies. Yeah. And, you know, I feel really sad for people in really populated areas Mm -hmm. that aren't actually even allowed to go outside. Yeah. I have have, um, some people that I work with in New York City and in in the UK and like they're allowed to go out for one hour. Wow. And there's police everywhere to monitor that, you know? And so to, to be in a situation where you can get out more is so helpful, but even to, you know, stand at an open window and feel the air and the sun mm-hmm. in your face or, so what we often do is we'll shut down and that's how we disconnect. And so the, the reversing of that then would be to connect. Yeah. And it's hard to do that. We can't do that physically necessarily right now. But, you know, we can call an old friend or we can get on an online platform or, mm-hmm. and I think people are really seeing that and craving that and, and trying to do that. 
And where is it, you know, like you said, even a few weeks ago, it seemed like you were too busy to go outside. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden now it's like, there's this real stop. It's like, wow, what am I doing in my life? Is it in alignment with what I really feel is important? Yeah, so true. So, so true. I am. Um, I paid for this big uh, mastermind mentorship group for the year. And, and the Monday they were telling us that we had to shut down all of our salons, all non-essential with the threat of that, it could maybe go into fall. That day I was um, presented with a deadline of signing up for this year long mentorship, which was not cheap. It was over $12,000. And I, I felt, going back to the somatic I felt so much suffocation in my body and so much contraction by not putting the money on the table, but by putting the commitment to myself, knowing that I had accountability, I had somebody helping me um, and not letting my mind be to my own device. (laughs) You know, it, it was something I knew I had to do. And so I think we need to follow those feelings of where we need to go, who we need to call you know, what kind of constructs we want to tap into. And I certainly, I think you would agree, not watch the news because these are all small, low vibrational inputs that are coming in. And what we let in is the output that we get. So it's another way to kind of look at how are we acting, all of that. So what are those inputs that we're bringing in and finding the help that we need or just finding quiet music or laying down in Shavasana and resetting the nervous system or doing breathing techniques like you're speaking about. But I, I remember a story with Gabor and this is coming to mind because how we've always showed up for other people and how like you or myself have kind of always been maybe a leader because we have a passion and an empath for people to find their truth and authenticity. He shared a story about going to the hospital. Remember, you know, I'm not sure if you know this story, but his mom was in the hospital and I think he was limping or something like that. He had an injury and he noticed when he opened the door and he walked into the room that he walked perfectly pristinely like a normal person to her bedside and was the rock for his mom. And then he just graciously, you know, after that walked out. And then when he closed the door, he started limping again. I think that's also something very interesting. And that story came up because we're always used to being like helping others, but there's also a true fact to what you're saying is that everybody's experiencing the trauma. Right. For you, listeners of Awaken Beauty Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Simply go to www.audibletrial.com slash Awaken Beauty Podcast. That's www.audibletrial.com Awaken Beauty Podcast. And so for you, could you maybe speak into, we don't know it right now because we're kind of in that shock phase. Mm. How could you speak into what that PTSD experience is and how it's okay because we're experiencing the shock that's to be expected and how we can kind of transition and what that transition usually looks like for PTSD. Because I would certainly say whether small or large, however that is for someone, that's certainly what people are experiencing. And or we'll look back a month or two months and say, oh my gosh, that was PTSD. Right. One thing that is helpful, I think, to start with is that there's ordinary trauma or little t trauma, which a lot of people don't really give much weight to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it might have been you were bullied at school, but it didn't feel like it was that serious. Or, you know, we compare our trauma with somebody else who had it worse. Right. Um, You know, the one of the things that I really appreciate about ACEs, the Adverse Childhood Experiences Score, is that emotional neglect is part of that. You bet. So even though I wasn't beaten or called names or I didn't have that addiction in the house or something, I also had an experience of I was on my own. Yep. That's really threatening to people. And that's survival. You always felt like you had to be in survival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely it is, yeah. And so that's one thing to know is that even if we don't think we've had big T trauma, like we haven't been in war, we haven't had that kind of abuse that we think of like that, that we still have, many of us have the effect of kind of ordinary trauma, the pain of human life, you might say. Mm -hmm. And then something like this comes along And it's a big T trauma for everybody, even though big T trauma might be thought of like as a, you know, like an assault or something like that. But 
even though this is, is lasting for weeks and months, it's also sudden. So our mm. whole world just kind of fell apart. And it was about three weeks ago, kind of mid-March, people were starting to go, wow, it's in the United States and Canada. It's in Europe. This isn't something far away anymore. This is yeah. something that we actually have to change our behavior. We have to, you know, everything just shifted. And so what do we do with that knowledge? Well, one of the things we can do is learn enough about the nervous system to go, these are normal responses. Yep. Irritability, rage, trouble sleeping, overeating, any kind of an addictive thing, turning yep. against each other. And, and those are all primitive brain mm-hmm. things. And so if we could relax our system, our cognitive brain will come along and we'll have more resources. So that's, that's something that's really important. And it's really possible. Mm-hmm. So, you know, these daily practices that I do online, lots of people have really healed significantly just by doing those practices regularly. Yeah. So learning how to breathe to downregulate the nervous system. When we're in that threat mode where our sympathetic nervous system is way over overblown, we're hypervigilant, we're always scanning yes. for, for threat. And when we can do some deeper breathing, and there's some really simple tools like um, Dr. Peter Levine, another mm-hmm. really recognized trauma expert, talks about using the syllable VU and breathing out longer. So if you can breathe out six seconds or longer, it helps to activate your relaxation system. And Does Stephen that also Port- go into the vagus nerve? Yeah, Stephen Porges yeah. talks about the polyvagal system and the vagus nerve, right? Yeah. And so a lot of people are starting to go, okay, so I have this really hyperactive nervous system and that's a symptom of PTSD. Yeah. yeah. And then we also have complex PTSD, which relates more to childhood yeah. brain development that didn't happen. So through some kind of abuse, neglect, those kinds of circumstances. And as we... As we work with our breath and we work with downregulating our nervous system, we start to have some confidence in our ability to actually downregulate. Mm-hmm. So we can do these breathing patterns of you know longer exhalations, or um, we can do like the five, four, three, two, one senses practice, or we look around the room and name five things we can see. We go through the senses. Um, Andrew Weil talks about four, seven, eight breathing a lot, where we breathe in for four, we hold for seven, we breathe out for eight. And so there's some emergency practices when we're starting to panic, we can do some of those things. Yeah, I think breathing is probably, you know, one of the best and most short-term, you know, autonomic nervous system shift and and reset that we can do. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And so those experiences start to give us confidence that we're actually not out of control, that we can actually do something with our nervous system. And then we have the longer term to do relaxation practices, to do, you know, something every day, you know, getting out and and walking is one thing, Mm -hmm. being around people who love us and who aren't critical of us helps us to feel safer. And to, to put like what's happened just recently is that everyone's going, actually, I can't wait for this any longer. Mm -hmm. I actually need to do something right now Mm -hmm. and it will really help. And then our nervous system experiences that. And then we start to to just have that more resilience and strength in the nervous system. And I really like how you breathing. I love how you framed it, the confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. if you're already um, in this this pattern of self abuse and you're just beating yourself up, breaking free from that and getting the confidence that you can bring yourself mm-hmm. self regulation. Anybody and everybody is certainly. Um, you know, has the opportunity to do that. And so I really like how you use the word confidence and that it takes repetition. Um, okay. Something that you do is you offer um, meditation every morning. And you, how many years have you been doing this? Almost five years. It'll be five mm-hmm. years in December. It started as a 30-day thing. I was just going to offer it in December 2015. And, um, you know, people liked it. So we just kept going with it. So what do you do if you don't feel like doing meditation in the morning? <laughs> I always feel like it. <laughs> but to your point, it's it's offering others, uh, you know, for everybody listening, you know, on her website, you can go ahead and, and tap into that Zoom call. Is mm-hmm. that's that's one that's one thing that you can do today that you know the the sacredness of Lynn's voice coming through this podcast invites you into that space where you can start creating just one habit, half an hour, great way to start 
experiencing that. And there's, um, you know, there's a, a, a gradually building experience in our body that we mm-hmm. need of safety and downregulation. And, you know, for parents who have children at home right now, especially, the most important thing to do with your children is to help them work with their nervous system. Yeah. So that means we have to work with ours first. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, to do some dancing or mm-hmm. do something to shake the body and, and kind of get some of that fear out of the body and to do yeah. some breathing and, and to work with the mind and just to validate, hey, this is a scary time right now. You know, you don't get to see your your friends right now and I understand that that's hard. And how can we all form an alliance so we can work together and get through this and not be fighting against each other all the time, you know? And yeah. that's all about the nervous system. Absolutely. Yeah, it does, you know, it really takes the shame away or the, you know, it takes off the confusion when you are, I always talk about the Awaken Beauty podcast is helping women and now it's beyond, it's adding the mind, but connecting their beauty and biology because if I'm, I'm doing somebody's hair, but we're talking about our hair loss, it has nothing to do with what the external is. The real conversation is what are the stressors in your life that are maybe kicking off your thyroid that are causing you to have hair loss. It always goes back to what are you experiencing and hanging on to that the body is reacting in such a way for an extended amount of time that's resulting in X. And so another piece that I like to share with clients is the power of imagination. So I think you would agree probably, you know, we are talking about meditation by ourselves, or if you've never done meditation, probably maybe wouldn't be the first thing to go to if you're by yourself and trying to do that because it does take kind of a discipline to come back to your body and maybe something more like a guided visualization or a guided meditation is better to help guide you through that. And the imagination is so powerful. I mean, when I teach hypnotherapy um, clients, you know, we have the critical factor filter and anything that we let back behind that are all subconscious pieces that are going to kind of, we're going to blow up. And so we're really going to create a magnifying glass and blow up our imagination 200, 300 times what the reality really is. So I just kind of want to put that as also a checkpoint out there is making sure that we're using our imagination for good and not allowing it to run wild because that little child in there is running wild and that we need to bring it into the front faculty and agency and make sure that we're really present and conscious in our day versus just letting our imagination run wild. And so maybe we do a visualization technique maybe a couple times a a day or go for a walking meditation. Those I think are good tips too. Mm -hmm. My meditation teacher used to say the greatest gift you can give the world is a peaceful mind. Love that. Yeah. So when something like this happens, it's hard to stay Mm self-regulated. The more that we can do that, the more we can help other people. And it might be that you can help your children. It might be that, you know, you can get on the phone with friends and help them to kind of settle. It might be that you're not a jerk at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we just need to have that felt sense of safety. And we can always connect with ourselves. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the gift of this time, if people are able to, is to really tune into what's going on with me right now. And am I disconnecting from myself because it's so scary? And that would be the case for many of us, at least part of the day. Mm-hmm. And, and how can I really bring kindness and, and compassion? This is a hard time. Mm-hmm. And everybody has a lot of fear. And even if we're working with it very successfully, it still takes a lot of energy mm-hmm. and we're probably not sleeping as well as we normally do. So we're more tired. Yep. You know, we're craving those things that in the past have helped us to settle. And some of those things are helpful things and some of them are not. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just a really difficult thing right now. And fear tends to bring out the worst in, in mm-hmm. many people. Yeah. It's a like lowest, lowest vibration that we could shame and fear is lowest vibration. And so that can really, you know, putting it in context, thanks to the immune system, you know, it just drags our immune system down and, and doesn't allow the body to feel safe to free up and all of the cytokines, you know, we talk about the virus being a cytokine storm, but we're really creating our own cytokine storm by just being in that lower state of fear. And so I think it's normal to recognize it. Say fear, I see you here. Thank you. You said, you know, thank you for being here. You can stay as long as you'd like. But I think for me, and and just saying that out loud, it doesn't seem so scary. Right. And it is here. Mm -hmm. 
we might as well be truthful about that. We do have fear. And the fear isn't the end of the situation. Like right. we can work with it. We, we can calm ourselves. We can connect. We can be kind. And that's what really helps to lessen the fear. Like I know for myself, when I'm feeling kind of my shoulders are starting to get tense, that was always my old standby was my mm-hmm. shoulders. Yeah. And we have that kind of bracing through the back of our body because yep. we're kind of bracing for trouble, you know? And I interviewed Dr. James Gordon. He wrote a wonderful book called The Transformation. Hmm. And he works with large traumatized populations. And you can find his work. Uh, he's, he did some 60-minute interview and he's been on NBC. He's, he's uh, a really wonderful person to talk to about trauma. He worked with Parkland School shooting people after that happened. Um, and what he does is this beautiful practice of shaking and dancing. So th- there's breathing. And you breathe in and say soft and you breathe out and through your mouth and say belly. So you do that for a few minutes and then you stand up and you start to shake. And so you shake through your legs and your hips and your shoulders mm-hmm. and you do that for like seven minutes. Wow. So when I first heard of it. I'm like, it's a oh lot of time. <laughs> That's a lot of time. <laughs> and then you breathe for a couple more minutes and then you put on some kind of music you like and you dance for four or five minutes. And so I interviewed him in, I think it was November and I've been doing that practice almost every day since. I love that. And it's so calming. And so I'll be sitting here and I'll notice, you know, I'm writing my newsletter, I'm doing something and I'll notice my shoulders are kind of tense and I'll get outside. I do it outside on my deck and I turn on the music and I do that and I feel so much better. Yeah. And if I, if I don't feel better in the 15 minutes then I'll do it another 15, you know, mm-hmm. and just to do something that gets us in our body and releases some of that fear. Mm-hmm. And it's really helpful. Helps yeah. us to and that goes back to energy. Happen. You know, everything is it energy. It goes back to energy, yeah. And uh, it wants to come in and you got to shake it off and, and, you know, move it out. So I love that. I really, really love that. Get up and turn some music on. I have done that a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. and, and two, working around the house, like you said, shaming yourself because you don't have the energy to, I think you said some, you've seen things on Facebook or, and, and for me, I'm, I'm always on lives and I'm always doing Facebook or Instagram more so. And I'm not, I'm not choosing to get my correspondence at that that way at this time at all. And the time I am putting in is having podcasts where I'm intimately having a discussion with someone. And then outside of that, I'm reinventing myself and I'm reinventing my biofeedback program and my hypnotherapy business because that's what really brings true value and what how I can serve right now. So, you know, spending time and rein, reinventing and, and exploring new possibilities versus, um, you know, numbing things down and, and entertaining. I think there's so much consumption, but consumption also wears us down. It makes us more confused. You know, is it bringing me confusion or clarity? And we really need to search for clarity right now. And CNN and Fox News is not where to find that. (laughs) All right, ladies, if you're looking for natural organic solution-based beauty and superior CBD, go to evokebeauty.com. That's E-V-O-Q beauty.com and receive 25% off your very first order with the code AWAKEN. Again, that's E-V-O-Q beauty.com. Type in the code AWAKEN for 25% off your first order. And, you know, one of the really interesting things about this explosion of online practices yeah. and support yeah. is that you can literally turn on a Facebook Live or, yep. or go to people's websites and see and, and join Zoom meetings. And there are all these things that you had to like live in a certain location to see that teacher. A yeah. lot of them are all free now. And, yeah. and you can, like Dr. Rick Hansen, I've interviewed him a few times. He's a wonderful Wonderful uh, neuropsychologist, really practical, really helpful. Mm-hmm. He's live streaming everything on Wednesday nights, I think now. And uh, you know, Tara Brock has some yes. wonderful practices, and and NCHEM and Defo has the Resilience Project in in LA, and she's got a whole series of small groups that you can go to. Oh, and so there's really wonderful resources right now for people. Mm-hmm. And and so to to not shame ourselves for not reaching out for that as much as we might think, well, I should do every day. I should do, you know, but to just try to do something every day that connects you with yourself, that, you know, where you can be kind with yourself and just acknowledge 
this is a hard time right now and I'm really doing my best and I want to, I want to come through this with, you know, some pretty stable mental health and some more insight maybe into what I really value. Mm -hmm. You know, I have two, uh, three grandchildren. The two boys are younger. And I don't think either of them are really all that sad that they're not at school. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and so they get to hang out with the family more. They're cooking together. They're, you know, they're doing meditation together every day. And I think they're actually really enjoying it. So so it isn't a complete disaster, this. this whole no, and, and even thinking about families that are maybe in avoid things by the screen or what have you at some point in time, if you're, if you're stuck in the home for two months, it will force you to have to dine together. It will force you to have to (laughs) coordinate together. Now it saddens me that domestic violence and all of that is on the rise, but you know, we can look at hope for families. There is hope for families to be able to come back together. And, uh, you know, I always think back into like the forties and fifties and I can feel the energy of that time and like just the wholesomeness of the family at that time and how much of that, that we've lost and how America was so great at that time and the great revolution and, and all of that. And think about that when we come back with the economy, that we're more, we're less separated. We're more together as a globe. And we've used the constructs of what have the information that has kind of pulled us apart to now use it for our good out of personal choice. And that this is a reinvention of the globe when we go back. So I kind of think about this back in the 40s and 50s of this, you know, the this revolution happening again in an entirely different way. It's a total reset, which is, I really celebrate. I'm really happy about that. Mm -hmm. Well, and the the thing that we could do better this time Mm -hmm. is to have more truth and authenticity and more trauma-informed that we're not just pretending everything is okay. Um, But certainly the, you know, the economic structure of the middle class disappearing has put so much pressure on families. Oh, for sure. Having one person at home to kind of take care of the, the family and, and to have that ability to not have two people working flat out all the time. Yeah. That's been a real, a really negative impact. So if that could change, you know, that would really, that would really make a difference. You know, children have such a hard time right now. There's so much pressure. Yeah. A lot of kids are dealing with, you know, blended families and going back and forth with custody. Yeah, good point. It's really tough for kids right now. And so if the parents aren't really self-regulated, they're not really able to provide that connection with the kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many, uh, you know, you mentioned Dan Siegel earlier. Mm -hmm. There's so many great resources. He and Tina Payne Bryson have got some great stuff around children. Mm -hmm. And and it's all about connection. Everybody's circling back to connection, that we need to be connected with ourselves and with each other. And that's something that we can do. That's also very possible. And with the earth, you know, we're organisms that live within the earth. And and for us, for so long, we've modulated our day to get up at 4.30 because we need an hour and a half to just get awake. You know, we have an opportunity to kind of reset our circadian rhythms and start living with nature again too. And I think it's really a beautiful piece that we can tap into. So I think from today's discussion is yes, there's this um, this reality of uh, being re- being honest with ourselves about trauma and that we are experiencing trauma right now and just being cognitive of that is okay. You don't need to like go down into the body and, okay, I'm going through trauma, but just to be aware that we're going to come out of this and then just creating the right constructs of support system we feel are right and true for us, I think are the most important things that we can do right now as we reinvent ourselves and, and listen to beautiful people like you. So thank you so, so much, Lynn. Is there anything else that you would want to share or would be helpful with our guests? I'm certainly going to share your website, your YouTube channel. There's all kinds of breathing exercises and you do such a wonderful job of just really, just a sweet, sweet sincerity behind your voice. And just, I think people could probably binge on your YouTube channel because they're short, they're fun, they're sweet. Um, Is there anything else that you want to share today on the Awaken podcast? You know, I, I, um, one of the recent guided practices on my YouTube channel is, I think it's called kindness is all you need. Mm -hmm. And when I say that to people, I said, really, in order to heal, kindness is all you need. And they're like, you've got to be kidding me. It can't be that simple. And it, you know, in order to be kind with ourselves and, and I'm talking about with ourselves primarily, and then it, 
it goes out with other people too. But in order to be kind with ourselves, we have to be on our own side. Yep. And we have to heal and, and have some kind of inspiration that it's going to be helpful and possible mm-hmm. to be a friend to ourselves and to stop turning against ourselves mm-hmm. and to understand that that's, a, that that's a mechanism that happens in childhood when we turn against ourselves. We're trying to keep ourselves safe. When we feel fear and when our, we're holding our breath, all those things, the catastrophic thinking, those are all mechanisms to try to keep ourselves safe. Yeah. Our whole system, our body, our mind is always trying to do the best thing for us. Yeah. And so if we can welcome that and have compassion for ourselves and each other, this is a really hard time. Mm-hmm. And to feel that connection with each other is really healing. Yeah. So some of the small groups that I'm that I do and and some of the connections with people, people talk about that all the time, mm-hmm. that it's the connection. Mm-hmm. We need to feel safe enough to be authentic and real and connect and be vulnerable. And that, that's, that's the cure for the disconnection. It's the cure for fear in our body to, to really be present with ourselves and kind. So yeah. I think that would be the one message to, I hope that everybody would really take away is to be kind with yourself. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, self-compassion. I think I heard somewhere that men were put on this earth to learn how to love women and women were put on this earth to learn how to love themselves. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that self-compassion is is kind of hard to tap into if you had that safety and security complex when you were a child. Mm-hmm. Because for some reason, subconsciously, deep, deep, deep down inside, you don't deserve that because you didn't have that. So the body didn't know that. The mind didn't know that. It wasn't a part of your normalcy. And looking at Maslow's law, you know, I think to put it out there for everybody and ending with this, you know, safety and security is the number one thing that we all need to feel. And if we really, really close our eyes, we really are really practical with ourselves and really honest with ourselves. We have a bed to sleep on. We still have food to eat. You know, hopefully we can get out for that, even if it's just an hour outside, but we know that it's not forever. You know, I think to keep that in mind, the self-compassion is just really, really important, but we are truly safe and, you know, they're trying to keep us safe. So understand that that's what they're trying to do. And I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, so I'm not going to go there, but um, taking, taking this time at hand to do that. So Lynn, thank you so much for being on the Awaken Beauty podcast. Uh, where can everybody find you? And can you share your website, please? Well, first, I wanted to say thank you for having me. Yeah. I, I always love talking about this because yeah. it's so helpful mm-hmm. for people to understand and to have that inspiration that there's things that they can do. Yeah. yeah. So my website is lynnfraserstillpoint.com, stillpoint.com. I'm on Insight Timer. I'm on YouTube. Uh, everywhere that I am, it's all Lynn Fraser Still Point. And you can you go to my website. Those daily practices, which everyone is welcome to come to, are at 8 a.m. Eastern. And for the last three weeks, and we'll continue this for a while, I've been hanging around for another 20 minutes so people could have a chance to share, or ask questions, or say, you know, this is what's coming up. Um, and then... My Sunday classes uh, are at 10 a.m. Eastern for an hour and a quarter. And right now in March and April, we're doing Peaceful Mind. (laughs) Just Mm. I had no idea this was coming. And I've made those free now. And then in May and June, we're going to do work on resilience and strength. So people are also very welcome to come to that. And the educational and inquiry part of that is also on my YouTube channel. So you could just, last two weeks, we've been working with anger. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's a lot coming up for people. And mm-hmm. it's just a variety of different things. So there's really a lot of easy ways to get support and, and to tune in. And if you want to join me, you're more than welcome to do that. And can you share the name of your book one more time for us, please? Friends with Your Mind, How to Stop Torturing Yourself with Your Thoughts. I and I have a new book that I'm working on right now called Ordinary Trauma, Extraordinary Healing. Ooh, I like that. With the pain of being human. Wonderful. Well, you are a gift to so many, Lynn, and I appreciate you so much. And, and uh, you know, a reminder to everybody that the heart, the energy from the heart is so much more powerful than it is the mind. So we try to deal with everything up in the mind, but if we can open up the heart, expands, that energy expands out up to seven feet from outside of us. If we can just open up our heart and just not even have to say something to people sometimes, and just have that heart space open for ourselves and then expand it to somebody else is really healing in itself. So thank you for doing that with us today. And I'm expecting 
sending my heart back to you and everybody will feel it that listens to the podcast on this episode. So thank you so much. And all of you on the Awaken Beauty podcast, please like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Leave any comments or ahas that you had from this great, rich, beautiful time today with Lynn. And until next time, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. All right, ladies, if you're looking for natural, organic, solution-based beauty and superior CBD, go to evokebeauty.com. That's E-V-O-Q beauty.com and receive 25% off your very first order with the code AWAKEN. Again, that's E-V-O-Q beauty.com. Type in the code AWAKEN for 25% off your first order. Well, hello, Awaken Beauty. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Were you inspired? Please leave a comment or your own personal aha moment so others can capture exactly what you did. Also, please like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And if you're interested in high quality natural products for your hair, skin, and wellness, including organic CBD, please visit evokebeauty.com. Again, that is evokebeauty.com, E-V-O-Q beauty.com. 